Well, good morning. Not for sure if I'm doing this right. And if by chance, if my wife is watching, if she would send me a text real quick to let me know if this thing is running. Because I do not see if anyone's on. Or if someone's watching, send me a text to let me know if this is live or not. Can you do that? There's one. Let's see who it is. Yes, okay. Good morning, everyone. This is the most weird and uh, uncomfortable thing that I've probably done in my entire ministry. Uh, we are down here at the church this morning, and when I say we... Uh, it's hope in the Lord and me. There's absolutely no one here. And uh, it is a sad thought to know that we are doing what we are doing. But we must make the best of what we can. Uh, for you that have joined us this morning, we want to say welcome. And uh, hope that you have been feeling well and are safe. Mona and I have uh, survived the, the covid and uh, glad that that is over. Uh, we still have a, a, some lingering effects of it, but uh, we are doing well, and we want to say thank you for your thoughts and your prayers. Uh, we will give you some more information as to what we will do next week. We'll probably send out a one call, and uh, we'll also keep you informed uh, on our, uh, our app, and also on Facebook. So kind of be, uh, be looking out for info for what we will be doing next Sunday. Hopefully <clears throat> everything will be doing uh, a lot better and we'll be able to join together in worship. Uh, today I'm just going to share with you a few thoughts of some stuff that uh, I've kind of come across in the last couple of weeks. And uh, one of the things I'm going to ask at the beginning of this is, is what are some things that you forget on a regular basis? And I have uh, been on the Internet and, and done some research trying to figure out what it is we forget so easily and so often. And, and I want to start off today with just a list of things that uh, I have found that people have taken surveys and, and have compiled a, a number of items that we forget on a regular basis. So let me get to the pulpit and uh, share those with you and we'll get started. If you have your Bibles today, we're going to be reading out of Psalms chapter 103. But before we do that, I'd like to share with you things that we forget every day. And here are the top 10 things that I have discovered on the internet this past week. The number one thing that we forget on a daily basis is, is we often forget to return phone calls. As a matter of fact, I was uh, out the other day and a friend of mine called me and uh, I was busy with eating lunch with a, a guy and, and when we got done with lunch, I just simply forgot to return the phone call and, and didn't get back to him until the next day. So. That's the number one thing that, according to the web, that we forget on a daily basis is to return phone calls. We forget to reply to emails. We live in a day and age where snail mail is, is no longer of use. We always use our emails to, to relay messages to people. And, and one of the things that we often forget on a daily basis is to reply to those emails. One of the things that I forget and uh, when someone comes to our church and visits, uh, they, they may tell me their name, but I promise you before the church service is over, I have forgotten their name. That's the third thing that we forget on a daily basis is people's names. Another thing that we forget on a daily basis is we forget to send birthday cards or we forget to send a thank you card. Uh, another thing that we forget and 
this probably would be higher on the list for me than any of the other ones, and that would be we forget to charge our cell phones. And when our cell phones go dead, we absolutely go nuts because we just can't live without our phones. And when it starts showing the battery life is at 3% and 2% and then 1%, then your phone starts to ding and we're wondering to ourselves, why didn't I plug this in last night? Another thing we forget is the passwords that we have used to set up different accounts. Maybe it's to our checking account. Maybe it's to our emails. And, and it's so easy to forget what password we put in there to allow us to log into something. And we forget those passwords. Another one that we forget is, uh, and I don't know how this one showed up because uh, I don't know if I've ever really done this one or not, but the 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 ninth thing, thing that the internet says that we forget on a daily basis is taking the meat out of the freezer to defrost it. Uh, I just told the microwave, so that's really not a big deal to me. And then the last one is watering the plants. It says that these are the things, these are the top ten things that we forget on a daily basis. But there's something that I want to add to this top 10 list that I really believe should be on the list. And here's one of them that I think should be on the list is how often do we even think about our hearts? Unless you're having a chest pain, you, you probably never really think about your heart, but if I could add one more to it, how often do you think about the heart of God? And so with these top ten, 10 things and the two that I've added to it brings us to the passage of scripture that I would like to share with you this morning. In Psalms chapter 103 verses 6 through 18, if you'll just kind of bear with me as I endeavor to read from God's word. In verse 6, the psalmist writes, the Lord does what is fair. He brings justice to all who have been hurt by others. He taught his law to Moses. He let Israel see the powerful things he can do. The Lord is kind and merciful. He is patient and full of love. He does not always criticize. He does not stay angry with us forever. We sinned against him, but he did not give us the punishment we deserve. His love for his followers is as high above us as heaven is above the earth. And he has taken our sins as far away from us as the east is from the west. The Lord is kind to his followers as a father is to his children. He knows all about us. He knows we are made from dust. He knows our lives are short. That they are like grass. He knows we are like a little wildflower that grows so quickly. But when the hot wind blows, it dies soon. You cannot even see where the flower was. But the Lord has always loved his followers. He will continue to love them forever and ever. He will be good to all, his, to all their descendants, to those who are faithful to his agreement and who remember to obey his commands. It is a powerful, passionate passage of scripture from which we have read from this morning. And before we get into this message, this lesson, these few thoughts that I would like to share with you, uh, I'd like for us just to pray. If ever, and, and we say this so many times, we always say if ever there was a day, an age, and a time in which we need to pray to God, it's today. But we really do need to pray today and ask for God's blessings upon us. We need to pray today and ask God to, to simply watch over us and to help us to give us strength each and every day that we are walking on this ball that we call earth. So if you will, and I know this is all odd, this is weird stuff, but where you're at, if you're sitting on your couch, if you're still laying in bed, Maybe you're sitting at the breakfast table. I just want you to pause just for a moment. And let's just go to God in prayer. 
Our Father in heaven, as we bow today, God. Lord, this is, uh, this is out of my box. This is out of my comfort zone. This seems so weird to me. And God, I, I walked in this sanctuary this morning. And as I walked in here and, and started walking around, God, you know what I said to you. Are we even making a difference? Is this even being effective in people's hearts and lives? And so, God, I pray to you today that you will use this moment in time to, to those that are listening. I pray today, God, that you would bless them for taking time out of their lives to pause just for a moment to come and hear your word. Lord, I pray you will be with the message giver. Give him the words that, that I need. That I need to hear from you today, God. Bless the reading of your word. Bless the intent of it. We ask these things in your precious son's name. And amen. As we do so many times before we begin a message or a lesson, we always seem to ask a question. There's so many questions that we as preachers can stand behind podiums such as this and, and ask the parishioners questions. And we many times do that just to kind of get your brains engaged in what is about to take place. But today I want to ask you a very serious question. Do you ever wonder what God really thinks about you? Do you ever just pause for a moment and ask yourself, God, what exactly do you think about me? You see, one of our greatest barriers to knowing God better is this. It may be how much we know about how much God knows about us. That's a mouthful. That, that's a lot to be said. So let me read this to you real slow. It may be how much we know about how much God knows about us. Would we not all agree about this, that we often struggle with God because we feel so bad about ourselves? And if the truth be known, and if the truth be known, we know the truth about us, then how much more does God know about us? For after all, there is no way that we will ever have the ability to fool God. Sometimes we just don't want to pray. We just don't feel like praying. Maybe we, we just don't feel like studying our Bibles. Maybe the truth of it is that sometimes we just don't want to think about God. And the reason for that is I believe it is simple. Because when we look in the mirror, we feel like saying something like this. Greg, you are a big disappointment. Or we may say something like this, Greg, you ought to be doing better by now. You, you've had your struggle, Greg. You, you ought to be over that struggle by now. You ought to have a closer walk with God by now. You ought to be living a more vigorous life for God by now. I'm sure many of us have felt that way from time to time. And, and I imagine that maybe some of us feel that way right now. For after all, it's been, it's been a difficult two weeks. For after all, it's been a bad month. This, this may be the first month to a new year, but it seems like the new year isn't so new after all. Maybe we feel that way right now because it's just been a difficult couple of years. I kind of believe Sam Storms has captured the truth in one simple sentence. He said these words, I think we run from God rather to him because we know our hearts all too well and we know his barely at all. You see, if we were honest with ourselves, then, then I'm sure that I don't need to spend much time convincing us that we are depraved people. I'm sure we know the truth about ourselves all too well. But it's the other side that I would like to share with you today. It's the other side that we find the words of encouragement. We find the words of comfort. We find the words of strength in such discouraging times. For after all, how well, how well do we know the heart of God? 
You see, that's where Psalms 103 can help us out tremendously. Chances are there is no other chapter in the Bible that so clearly reveals God's compassion for you and for me. If we're wondering today what God thinks about us, then come with me this morning on this journey as we travel through Psalms chapter 103. And it's in this passage of scripture we will discover some liberating truths about God's heart. For after all, I really do believe we all would like to know more about God's heart than we do already. Now, for the sake of time this morning, I don't want to cover all of the truths we find about God's heart in this passage of Scripture. But it is in today's lesson, it's in today's thoughts that I would like to just simply highlight a few inspiring truths about God's heart. Things about God's heart that we should want to know. Matter of fact, as I look at the first point, as I look at the first thought of today's lesson, I can't help but draw a line under verses 6 and 7 from the text in which we read. It says, the Lord does what is fair. He brings justice to all who have been hurt by others. He taught his laws to Moses. He let Israel see the powerful things he can do. The truth of that passage of scripture is this. God loves to help those that are in need. I do truly believe that the Lord is in the business of helping those that can't help themselves. Matter of fact, the Old Testament word is oppressed, which especially refers to the widows, the orphans, the foreigners, and the poor. And when I read that passage of scripture, I read it something like this, that when we try to take advantage of others because we are strong and they are weak, God is simply saying to us, you better think again. For after all, it is God that takes the side of the weak. It is God that keeps his eyes on the helpless. It is God that moves the balance of the scales of justice in life. I like the words of Martin Luther King Jr. when he said these words. The arm of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice. I realize that there are days and times that this is hard to believe. It's hard to believe when we consider all that's going on in the world in which we are living today. We have suicide bombers. We have terrorist attacks. We have the lack of government accountability. We have global eco-friendly issues. And we have the coronavirus. But according to thus saith the word of God, this passage of scripture stands like a solid rock for everyone who is a believer. If all of history is a book, then we have not reached the final chapter yet. We may feel like we are somewhere near the end, but this much we know for sure. Eventually, God will bring everything into light. And when he does, he will judge with all fairness. For it is in that day there will be no hiding. It is in that day there will be no excuse making. It is in that day there will be no bribes. It is in that day there will be no way of escape. I, I like how James Russell Lowe, the great American poet of the late 1800s, he says these words, truth forever on the scaffold, wrong forever on the throne. Yet that scaffold sways the future and behind the dim unknown stands God within the shadow, keeping watch of his own. Let me ask you a question today. Are you needy? I know the answer to that question. The answer is yes, whether we want to admit it or acknowledge it or not, we are needy. And if we are needy, then grab hold of this. God is on our side. I don't know about you, but that's a great place to start when it comes to knowing more about God's heart. That God loves to help those that are in need. And as good as the first point is of the message, I truly believe the second point is even greater. In Psalms 103 verse 8, it says, The Lord is kind and merciful, is patient and, and is full of love. God shows mercy to those who do not deserve it. Right there in that one small verse are four great attributes of God. It shows us that the Lord is compassionate. In other words, he pardons us. It's the act of forgiving us. The second attribute of God in that one little verse is the Lord is gracious. He gives us what we do not deserve. We could end the message right there. 
That is a great attribute of God that we must learn about God's heart is He gives us what we do not deserve. He's gracious. And it's also showing us that He is slow to anger. He's patient with us when we have failed Him. If I has, as Brother Johnny Bilby has said on numerous times from the pulpit, get a big cheap tablet and a number two lead pencil and write it out. If I was to write out my where I didn't fail him and where I failed him, my line down the middle and where I failed him on the right hand side of that big cheap tablet would be more full than where it was where I did good. Why is that? Because I am a sinful person by nature. And God is patient. Every time I have failed him. And the fourth attribute is the Lord is overflowing in his great love. His love for us is more than we can imagine. You see, what makes this passage so powerful is this, is that when he saves, he saves us completely. When he forgives, he forgives all our sins. The King James Version translates the last phrase of verse 8 by saying, plenteous in mercy. In Charles Spurgeon's book, The Treasury of David, he takes that phrase and offers this application. He says, all the world taste of his sparing mercy. Those who hear the gospel partake of his inviting mercy. The saints live by his saving mercy. We are preserved by his upholding mercy. We are cheered by his consoling mercy. And we will enter heaven through his infinite and everlasting mercy. I like that. Six kinds of mercy in just one sentence. I don't know about you, but that is plenteous mercy for anyone who needs it. And I know I need it today. And now, today... We find ourselves at the last thought that I'd like to share with you. Not that it is the final thought of this passage of scripture, for there are many other truths to be found in this passage. But it is this last thought that I share with you today. It's my favorite part of today's passage of scripture. Notice verses 11 and 12. He says, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Let us consider just for a moment the greatness of God's love. Now for all of you scientists out there, what I'm going to share with you next, I I hope it's accurate. It, It may be off a little bit, but this is the best that I could do in of doing some research on this. Astronomers tell us that the farthest known light source from the earth is 10 billion light years away. That means that a light starting from that source would take 10 billion years traveling at the speed of light to arrive upon earth. By contrast, the nearest star is only four light years away from us. That's four years traveling at the speed of light, which is 186,000 miles per second. Light from the sun reaches the earth in little over eight minutes. So even the nearest star is as va- is a vast distance from earth. So if us using ion driven force, we would reach the nearest star in a modern spaceship in only about 81,000 81, years. I know those are a lot of numbers and a lot of figures, a lot of statistics, but we can look at it any way we would like, but we are simply left with two inescapable realities. First reality is we live in a tiny corner of the universe. And the second reality is is this, the universe is vast beyond our comprehension. Now here's where it gets good. God's love is greater, enormous, larger, deeper, longer, broader, bigger, and all of these words and more. It is God's love that surpasses all dimensions of the universe itself. We today can climb into a rocket ship equipped with all sorts of sci-fi systems we can imagine. We could go as far as we could possibly go, and when we get to the end of the known universe and go beyond, are you ready for this? We have yet had to go as far as God's love goes. It's then that we look up and we smile because God's love is still going. We will never reach the end of God's love for us. 
That's the magnitude of God's love for each and every one of us. Here's the good news for all of us that are sinners living in this world. When God forgives, He removes our sins. He then lifts them up and He takes them away. He puts them so far away from us that we can never find them again, even if we search for a thousand years. As my notes say, these simple words, praise be unto God, my sins are gone forever. My sins can never come back and haunt me again. Even Satan cannot bring them back. I'm glad to know that we have a God that we serve today that has a heart like that. Because that's exactly the kind of God I need. I need that kind of God. Oh yes, we may never forget our sins, but the heart of God never remembers them again. And so today we have looked at just a few thoughts on the subject of the heart of God. And we know our hearts today. But do you know God's heart? Because God's heart is a heart that loves you and he longs to have a personal relationship with you. I want to close with this one thought, how he longs to have a personal relationship with you. That relationship with God is more than just meeting with him on Sundays. That relationship that God longs to have with you is one that goes each and every day that we breathe this air. He wants to have a relationship with you each and every day of your life. Not just on Sundays, not just on Wednesdays, but each day that we live. My prayer, my desire for each and every one of you today is that we would learn more about the heart of God. And Psalms 103 gives us the most descriptive detail of God's heart for you and for me. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, as we come to the end of this lesson today, Lord, I simply pray today, God, that these words, your word, will be able to speak to our hearts and our lives, that that we would be encouraged to, to learn more about you because, God, there's so much that we just so often forget about. Let us today be reminded to learn more about your heart towards us. We do love you, God, and we do pray for those that are sick in our church. We have some that are recovering from surgery. We have some that are homebound. They're just sick. God, I, I just pray that you would comfort them. God, I don't know what your will is for each of our lives today, God, but I do believe that you are a God that can comfort us in any circumstance that we are facing. So we pray today, God, for comfort upon these people's lives. God, bless them for their faithfulness of of maybe just watching this service today. I pray you'd bless each and every one of them. God, bring us back to your house that we can worship together as brothers and sisters in you once again. We ask these things in your precious son's name. And amen. God bless you today for your presence here. And uh, if you don't forget, on our app, you're able to give uh, your tithes and your offerings upon our app. Or you can mail the check in. And once again, let me also remind you that we will let you know exactly what we will be doing next week. Uh, Once again, let me remind you, we will send out a one call or we'll inform you on Facebook or through the app, our church's app, you'll find out for sure what we will be doing next week. God bless each and every one of you. Have a great week. We look forward to seeing you next week. Have a good week.